Good morning, God's people. This is uh, Sunday, April the 4th, and uh, this is Easter Sunday. And indeed, uh, he is risen. And I hope you have responded that he is risen indeed. Our Lord is no longer in the grave. He, God, by his mighty power, has raised him from the dead. Uh, so we are ready to worship together this morning. And as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the greatest, uh, uh, one of the greatest occasion in the Christian calendar. So let us worship the Lord together. The psalmist have said in Psalm 118 and verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture reading this morning is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is called the Resurrection Passage. And uh, I would like you to turn there with me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we will be reading verse 12 and we will stop at verse uh, at verse 28 1 Corinthians 15 reading from verse 12 and we will stop the reading at verse 28 but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he has raised Christ from the dead. But, the, but if he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who are falling asleep in Christ have lost. They are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ, the first fruit then, when he comes, those who believe, who belong to him, then the end will come. When the hands, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he had destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself who puts everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself 
will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. So read the word of the Lord. I'm inviting you this uh, Resurrection Sunday uh, to join me in prayer. Oh, I always remind you, especially in the Resurrection uh, Celebration Day, that our God is alive and He is well. He can hear and He answers. He, we're not praying to a dead God. We are praying to a living God, to a living Savior who can sympathize with my suffering and yours and who is attentive to our uh, prayers and our talk to him. So please join me in prayer as we go before the Lord and bring our requests to him. Let us celebrate. Let us thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ that uh, he has raised him from the dead. So because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow and know you and I have a hope. You and I can look forward to the life after this life, which shall be a lot better than what we have experienced in this life. So please join me in prayer as we go before the Lord. Uh, to him in prayer. Lord, in raising Jesus from the dead, you made this day, Easter Sunday, a day of rejoicing. Grant that we will sense the glory of the Easter event so that each Sunday is Easter and each day is filled with meaning and hope. Father, give us patience for the journey. Keep us from jumping to conclusions, from criticizing others too quickly, from not trying to understand issues. We have said that we want to care about others and to help in all kinds of circumstances. Teach us how to do it your way as you give us opportunity and guidance all along the way. Because we have received so much, help us to be willing to share our wealth and our blessings. By Christ's example, may we live lovingly, generously, faithfully, joyfully and sacrificially all through our future days may we seek your face and find your help so that when the journey is done we will discover ourselves standing at the door of our eternal home hearing those words of acceptance well done good and faithful servant enter into your reward for this we pray we pray also Heavenly Father for the sick among us for the suffering we pray for those who are suffering from COVID-19 we pray for those who are going through difficult times in their family, difficult time at work. May you restore unto them this Resurrection Sunday, resurrected, resurrected spirit to rejoice again, to be alive again, and to know that the Lord is with them and that he will carry them through, no matter what. So we commit this great celebration as our heart rejoice with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray who has taught us to pray. 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would hope that you have a press into some of the lengths of the songs that we have sent you and that uh, you have sung those wonderful resurrection songs and have filled your hearts with joy from the Lord. Now, let us get into the Word of God, and we hope by the end of the message you will be able again to use the link and sing and raise the roof of your apartment or your house so that uh, the world will know that you are in a, in a spirit of a celebration and rejoicing because of the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The message to us this morning is the resurrection of Jesus. We just simply want to talk about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My text is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. In the pathways to the cross, Ralph Turnbull told the story of a Muslim who said, to a Christian, we Muslim have one thing you Christians do not have. What is that? The Christian asked. The Muslim man replied, when we go to Medina, continued the Muslim, we find a coffin and know that Muhammad live because his body is in the coffin. But when you Christians go to Jerusalem, you find nothing but an empty tomb. When you go to Jerusalem, you Christians find an empty tomb. Thank you, said the Christian man. What you said is absolutely true. And that makes the difference, the eternal difference. We find in Jerusalem an empty tomb because our Lord leaves and we serve a risen Savior. A risen Christ. The cross is the unifying symbol of Christianity. But the empty tomb is our assurance that we serve a risen Savior who is in the world today. First, the resurrection chapter. 1 Corinthians 15 is the resurrection chapter of the Bible. The teachings of this marvelous chapter are outlined as follows. I do not really want to take the time to read all of it for you, but I do encourage you to take the time and go through it uh, after the message. Historical evidence for Jesus' bodily resurrection was given in verse 1 to verse 11. 
If you want to look into the historical account of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, please do so as you go through 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. The resurrection of Jesus is based and has its basis for the, for the resurrection of the dead. The dead in Christ shall rise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to verse 19. The, resurrection, the resurrected Christ is the first fruit of a great harvest of resurrection that is to come from verse 20 to verse 28. Practical results of belief of or unbelief in the resurrection of the dead is also recorded for us from verse 29 to verse 30. Those who were saved through the influence of now deceased Christ or deceased Christians are assured of a reunion. In this Resurrection Sunday, I want all those who have lost their loved ones, including me, I want all those who have gone to the grave and lay their loved ones, whether it be your mom, your dad, your partner, your children. I want all of us to know that verse 29 tell us of 1 Corinthians 15, that those now deceased in Christ, those Christians are assured a reunion, there will be a reunion, a reunited of all the Christians, whether they are dead now or will die someday. Those who suffer for Christ do not suffer in vain. Verse 30 to 32 tell us, those who do not believe in the resurrection are in danger of relaxing morals as verse 33 and 34 has recorded for us. We have looked into the, to the establishment of the resurrection, but now let's look at the nature of the resurrection and the resurrection body that will be given to every Christian, every follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 35 and, and all the way to verse 49. The body will be resurrected by the power and the intelligence of God. Look at verse 35 to verse 41. With, with me in your own time. The resurrection and the resurrection body will be uniquely different from the physical body. Look at verse 42 to 49. The time of the resurrection at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is also given to us. Look at verse 50 to 57. But lastly, look at verse 458. The assurance of the resurrection as a, as a motive for Christian service. It is also recorded for us there. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. What is done for Christ, what is done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will never be in vain. 
Secondly, let us look at the assurance of faith here. And this whole resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christians sing blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. The reason Lord assures us of the, vitality, uh, of the validity of the Christian faith. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, and also in verse 20. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. But now Christ is risen from the dead. One of the best documented facts of history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Some have rejected the resurrection because it does not fit into their philosophy. It remains, however, that the final evidence and the ultimate proof that every word and every act of Jesus Christ is true. Skepticism and unbelief are silenced by the empty tomb. Easter settles it all. By rising from the dead, Christ proved that he is the Son of God. Since Christ rose from the dead, he is he is his humanity is is humanity's only hope for salvation there is no other way jesus is the way the resurrection really proved that to us since christ rose from the dead every person must repent and prepare to meet god through the Lord Jesus Christ, who will come back into this world as a judge and not as a savior. Thirdly, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ also give assurance of, of, of forgiveness. What the world need most, what we need most in this life is knowing that we are forgiven, that our sins are covered. In the resurrection, the Christian find assurance of forgiven sin. Look at verse 17 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If Christ be not raised, you are still yet in your sin. Paul later said, that Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection, as it is recorded for us in Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Indeed, what I need is to know that I can be assured that I am forgiven because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and because it was sealed and assured to me by his resurrection from the dead. Are you forgiven? Have your sin been forgiven? Are you going to really lie to yourself and say, I have never sinned? I have never done anything wrong? I have never said anything wrong to anyone? Are you prepared to say this on this resurrected and then resurrection Sunday? No. No. You don't want to be a liar. You know that sin lives in you. You know that you are sin. And the only way to rid yourself of sin and guilt, it is by receiving the forgiveness that come to us in the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection assured us of that. Fourthly, a 
assurance of immortality come to us because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection assures the Christian of immortality. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 and 18. In verse 15 and 18, we read the word of the Lord here. That, uh, I'm taking it from verse 15. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. If And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sin. And in your sins, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ, they are all lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all other people in this world. So therefore, the resurrection assures us it assures the Christian of immortality. If Christ be not raised, then they also which are falling asleep in Christ, they also perish. The great Christian scientist Michael Faraday was asked just before his death, what are your speculations about the future? He replied, Speculations? I have none. I am resting on certainties. One find real meaning in this life, in hope in the life to come through faith in the living Lord Jesus Christ. Assurance of immortality is mine and is yours. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are just passing through this world. This world is not our home. We are looking forward to our eternal home where we will live forever and ever with our Lord. We are looking to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forever. We will be close with immortality. We will have a body that will never decay and never die again. This is the hope of the Christian. A new pastor was making the rounds of the shortings in his congregation. And he made his way up a narrow path to a plateau overlooking a harbor where he found a small cottage. He was ushered into the sparsely furnished house to a dark room in the back of that house. He almost wept at the sight of a one-armed blind man who was almost deaf. He shouted into his ears through a, a speaking trumpet and announced that he was the new pastor. The old man indicated that he would like to, to sing for his pastor. Sing! The pastor asks, in this prison of silence and darkness, 
What is there for him to sing about? Thought the pastor. With a loud cracking voice, the old man sung the beautiful hymn we all love. The beautiful hymn that we have all grown up with. Blessed assurance, he said, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Year of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. All, all of this, and all of this, because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm inviting you on this Resurrection Sunday, Easter, to a new life. The Holy Scripture tells us if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away and behold, everything become new. Easter represents to us spring. Spring when every dead flower, every dead grass come back to life. When the trees in this country spring up from their dead. Oh, that you may know it can be springtime in your life this Easter Sunday, if you would only believe in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, if you only would abandon your pride, repent of your sin, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ will give you new life, a brand new life. Oh, that the Holy Spirit of God will help us who have been Christians for a while to know that this body, this old body that we carry with us will one day leave this world and be buried. And as the trumpet of God sound, the dead in Christ will rise. We will be given a brand new body. Oh, that we will know that this is not all there is to life. Better yet is yet to come. Oh, that you will not leave the worship service with your family this morning without really inviting this resurrected Lord Jesus Christ to come and raise you from the deadness of sin and giving your life to him and receive the new, brand new life that he alone can give you. Oh, you said, is that true? Yes, it is true. Because I believe it. Because the Bible says it. I believe it. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has promised it. Yes, I bet my life to it. That if you do it, you will receive that brand new life. And the old things will pass away. And behold, all things will be new for you. Just like the spring. Oh, may the Lord bless you. As you do so. As you commit yourself to him. As you really uh, find faith in him. As you really commit yourself to him. This Easter Sunday. May God's grace spoken clearly on Resurrection Sunday and ever our courage guide our steps in the days ahead. And may we with joy celebrate the living presence of Jesus Christ and live in the fullness of his favor. The Lord bless you.